Good night. Good night. Good night. Okay, we are um we are going to begin with the session number four. Uh, it's really um amazing how the time has passed in this uh, first week. We are going to end at the week number one. Uh, we have four sessions and then we are going to enter the uh, week number two. So we are going to end this, um, this first week of this course, uh, talking about some topics that are very interesting. Um, the first one is talking about jobs and the second one is going to be um, a topic about an structure or a kind of a grammar topic. So we are going to begin with the first part because um, because of the time. We just have one hour, so we need to, to um, talk about all the things that we need to say in this uh, hour. So we are going to begin and I need you to see the objective for today. So we are going to see the document that I will send to you this night or maybe uh, tomorrow morning. Uh, not really sure, but I will send to you. So we have the objective for today and it says in this lesson participants will listen to conversation about job using WH question words as well as a statement. So yesterday we had that activity in which you were reading some question and also uh, I was uh, asking you some questions using that structure. I didn't send the document because I'm, I want to send all the information uh, at the end of this week. So for this activity, I'm going to, um, let you hear the conversation about jobs, and then we are going to talk about some expressions or the way in which we can uh, answer questions about our jobs. Um, we are going to uh, learn useful expressions to talk about that situation in our life. Maybe uh, we can think about the situation in which we have a job, the situation in which we don't have a job. So we are going to have those um, dos ideas. Así que vamos a tener expresiones que podemos utilizar cuando alguien nos pregunta sobre nuestro trabajo eh, con dos situaciones. Una, que sí estemos trabajando y dos, que no estemos trabajando. So, I will eh, search the conversation in that it's called Where Do You Work? That is the conversation, where do you work? And we are going to hear the expressions that they are using, uh, referring to the places they are working. And we are going to develop all the topics and phrases that we are going to um, use for this, um, for this day. So, let's, let me see this one, it's okay, yes. So we have here the conversation. So let's pay attention to the conversation. Hi everyone, welcome to section two. How do you spend your day? In this lesson, participants will listen to a conversation about jobs using WH question words as well as statements. Where do you work? Where do you work, Andrea? I work at Thomas Cook Travel. Oh, really? What do you do there? I'm a guide. I take people on tours to countries in South America, like Peru. How interesting. Yes, it's a great job. I love it. And what do you do? I'm a student, and I have a part-time job, too. Oh? Where do you work? In a fast food restaurant. Which restaurant? Hamburger Heaven. Okay, we have the conversation there uh, between two people that are talking about the jobs that they have. So let's make 
like a review of this conversation. So we have here the image of the conversation that they are uh, representing the things that they do. So we have Jason and Andrea. They are talking about some things and they uh, end talking about jobs. So Jason is asking Andrea um, the place in which she works. But I need to stop this one because I, I don't know if I will have uh, problems with the audio because of the internet. So uh, Jason is asking Andrea, uh, where do you work, Andrea? That is the main question for this topic. So she said, I work at Thomas Cook Travel. She said, I work at. Then uh, he says, oh, really? What do you do there? ¿Qué hace ella ahí? Le pregunta, ¿qué hace en ese lugar? I'm a guy. I take people on tours to countries in South America, like Peru. And he said, how interesting. Yes, it's a great job. I love it. And what do you do? I'm a student and I have a part-time job. Tiene un trabajo parcial, ¿verdad? Oh, where do you work? In a fast food restaurant. Which restaurant? Hamburger Heaven. So, in that conversation, we have some clues about the things that we are going to learn today. Uh, we are going to talk about the questions, uh, where do you work or what are you doing for a living, for example. And also we are going to have some expressions to talk about the place in which we work or the things that we are doing. Vamos a uh, tener unas expresiones o unas frases que las vamos a utilizar dependiendo del contexto de nuestra pregunta y de nuestra respuesta. Eh, por ejemplo, trabajo en, trabajo con, y eh, si es con materiales, con personas o cosas así. Pero ya vamos a ver las expresiones y algunos ejemplos sobre este tema. So, let's see. I need my document in which I'm going to write the information to explain better this topic. So, let's see. So here we are again in the document. So we are going to talk about the expressions or essential job vocabulary. We are going to expand our vocabulary in this um, situation. So we have essential job vocabulary. So in this case, um, we have the question. Remember the question, where do you work? That is our main question. Where do you work? La pregunta, ¿dónde trabajas? Es nuestra pregunta base para la información que vamos a obtener. And let's begin answering these questions. Where do you work? This seems like a simple question, but there are many ways to answer it. When someone asks us this question, maybe we can say, oh, um, I'm working on, and we say our uh, answer. But in this case, we have four ways to answer this question. Tenemos cuatro maneras de contestarlo. Number one, I work at. Number two, I work in. Number three, I work for. And number four, I work with. At the beginning, we have the same expression, but at the end, we have something different. We have here this one that is making the difference in the way we are responding this question. Add in, for, and with. So, why we have four ways? We are going to find that answer right now. So we're going to see the number one. We are going to separate them. 
I work at and for. We have the both of this. I work at or for. And we have here name of the company. So in this answer, we are going to use the name of the company in which we are working. So for example, it says, I work at Espresso English. I work at Espresso English. That is the name of the company. Or the other example, I work for Nike. I work for Nike. You can also use for if you work directly for a famous person. In this case, if you are working with a famous person, you can use the name of that famous uh, people. I work, I mean, I work for, and we can use the name, Tom Cruise, for example. And we can add some expression. I am his public relation manager. So in this case, with that expressions, we can use the name of the company, the name of the famous uh, people. In that case, just famous people. Then we have the second one. I work in. And we are going to use a place. A place. So we have the examples. And we have three examples. So we have example number one, and it says, I work in an office. Trabajo en una oficina, el lugar. Then I work in a school. I work in a school. Trabajo en una escuela. And then I work in a factory. So we are talking about the place in which we work and not talking about the name of the, of the company, just the physical space. We are talking about the physical space in which we are working. Then also we are going to use I work in for city or country. And we have another examples. And we have I work in Paris. And I work in France. Also, we can use this expression uh, to talk about a department. Pero no estamos hablando de un departamento de los lugares donde vivimos, sino un departamento que tiene que ver con la empresa, ¿verdad? A department. And we have, I work in the marketing department. Then I work in human resources. Then I work in sales. And also we are going to use for general area or industry.
una área general o una industria específica, ¿verdad? I work in finance. Then I work in medical research. And then I work in consulting. Then we have number three. I work with. I work with, and we have things or people that are the objects for your day to day work. So in this, uh, we are talking about, um, we can say the, the things in which we are working and also with the people that we are working every day. En esta de I work with, estamos hablando de cosas con las que trabajamos o personas que son los objetos, no que sean objetos en realidad, sino que es el objeto de nuestro trabajo, no que las personas son objetos, sino que es con lo que nosotros trabajamos todos los días. So, for example, in this one, I work with computers. And in the second one, I am a teacher. I am a teacher, I work with special need children. Like in my case, I am a teacher and I work with, a, I can say with a children and with teenagers. So in that case, my a object for my day-to-day -day work are children. So in that case, I go, I'm going to answer that question with that phrase, I work with, because I am a teacher and I work with children and teenagers in the private school. So in that case, we have different expressions to talk about our jobs. And if you can see, in this case, uh, this make our uh, conversation more interesting. It is not like uh, someone asks, where do you work? And you say, I'm working on my house or in my house, or I'm working with animals and like that. No, in this case, we have a lot of options in which we can use to answer that questions. So in the uh, first part, we have four expression, but if you can see in the number one, we have two expression for the same thing. Then we have number two and number three. The number two is the, um, that have a lot of information. The number two has, uh, the simple examples, then the city of the country, a department, and a general area. So it is the longest. So, all these uh, phrases use the ing form of the verb. So, in this case, um, when we are uh, using uh, these phrases, we are going to use the ing form of the verb. In this case, we are talking about the uh, present progressive, maybe. So, in this case, we are talking about, I work at, it's talking about a company. I work for, it's talking about a company or a famous person. I work in, is for a place, city, country, department, or general area or industry. And I work with, and we are talking about people and things. Así que, para el review o para el resumen, Work at, el que lleva at es para una compañía. Work for es para una compañía o una persona famosa. 
I work in, es para un lugar, una ciudad, un país, un departamento, una área general o una industria específica. Y I work with, es para personas y cosas. In conversational English, the question, where do you work, is commonly phrased as, what do you do? Or what do you do for a living? Not always uh, people are going to ask you where do you work. It's more um, it's much common that people ask you what do you do for a living or what do you do. It's um, that is the common question. You can answer with one one of the I work phrases, um, or you can say I am a I am an and your job title. That is very or oh, pretty uh, simple. For example, I am a teacher, I am an, an accountant. How do you answer this question if you don't have a job? In this case, I am unemployed or I am between jobs at the moment. And there are another expressions like I am a student eh, or I am a stay-at-home mom uh, or I am a, a stay-at-home dad. We have a lot of expression that we can use. If you work for yourself, you can say, I am self-employed. If you have your own company, you can say, I own my small business. Or more specifically, I own a restaurant or I own a graphic design company. Then how can we describe our job? Do you like your job? I think you like your job. Maybe, I hope so. Esperaría que les guste mucho su trabajo, ¿verdad? So, uh, we have different ways to talk about how you feel about your work. So, we are going to write other expression, but in this case, is talking about how we feel with our job. Describing your job. So we have the expressions here. So let's see. We are going to divide like this. And we have the first one. My job is interesting or exciting. What would you say? Tell me. Can you say my name? Oh. No. Um, I, I'm, I'm thinking, and no, I guess. <laughs> so it says, my job is interesting or exciting. Then we have the number two. I find my work very rewarding. I find my job, very, my work, I mean, my work very rewarding. So this means it satisfies uh, you and makes you feel good. Then the work is quite challenging. The work is kind or is quite, in this case, challenging. And it means that it can be a way to say it's difficult but in this case, it is a positive uh, connotation and you enjoy the difficulty of your work because you maybe you need to uh, feel that uh, challenge in your job. Then we have number four, my job is tired, tiring or demanding. Hiring or demanding. And the last one, the work is rather dual.
boring or repetitive. So in this case, dual is another way to say boring. Dual is another way we can use to say that something is boring. And repetitive means you do the same type of task uh, multiple times and there is not much variation. So we have here five expressions, I mean, yes, five expressions that we can use to talk about our job. For example, if we feel very happy with our jobs and we really like, we are going to use the first one. My job is interesting or my job is exciting. Sí, yo estoy muy feliz y me encanta mi trabajo. Yo puedo decir que mi trabajo es muy interesante y que es excitante, ¿verdad? En ese sentido de que yo me siento muy bien, muy feliz, me siento lleno de energía o llena de energía a la hora de hacer mi trabajo. Then, the second one. I find my work very rewarding. Eh, siento que mi trabajo, ¿verdad? Me llena de satisfacción y obtengo cosas buenas de mi trabajo. Then, the number three. In this case, it's like in the middle. The work is quite challenging. El trabajo es un poco, ¿verdad? Demandante en ese sentido. Me hace a mí eh, que yo me, me cambie de parecer muy rápido porque me está dando un reto. En este caso, no es algo malo, es algo bueno. Porque si a nosotros nos gustan los retos y nos gusta salirnos de nuestra zona de confort, in this case, this kind of work or job is the perfect thing for us. Maybe we need some things like this in our life because we like the adventure. So the last ones are the bad connotation of the uh, situations. So in the number uh, four, my job is tough, tiring or demanding. Mi trabajo es duro, es cansado, es demandante, pero no me siento bien con eso. No me está dando eh, un eh, reconocimiento a mi trabajo. Y la última, que es la peor, que espero que nadie esté sintiendo eso con su trabajo, es the work is rather too boring or repetitive. Mi trabajo es aburrido y repetitivo. If you are feeling that your job or your work is like that, I don't think you like your work. Well, I don't know. It's maybe we can change our minds, but... Your work needs to feel like something very interesting, very challenging, something uh, very rewarding, something exciting. You need to feel good. You need to feel happy with your job. So at the end of the session, or maybe tomorrow morning, I don't know, maybe, I think, I will send to you this document that is talking about the essential job vocabulary. It has 10 pages. You will find 10 pages with information about this topic because they have a lot of expressions. They have a lot of words. They have some vocabulary this, um, describing your job and all of that things. So I will send some material to you that you will uh, find useful for your courses. Uh, so. I think I will uh, send all of this information to you because it is interesting. So in this part of the uh, job vocabulary, we have mm, kind of short uh, information. It is not too long. So we are going to change the, um, we are going to change the topic. Now we are going to talk about grammar. We are going to talk about uh, structures. So I know, that many of you um, have a lot of information about present simple, but we're going to talk about that structure. So this is the end for the vocabulary about jobs and all of the things. You will find all the expression in this document because I will send to you this document at the end of the session. Maybe I will send the, uh, the link for this a document. So we have the next topic that is simple present. That is kind of basic topic, but we need to remember all the things that we know about this topic. So we are going to talk about simple present and we have the objective. 
By the end of this lesson, participants will be able to understand and use simple present. Vamos a recordar qué es el presente simple. Oraciones positivas, negativas, preguntas, eh, como lo podemos utilizar en la daily life and all of that information that we have about the simple present. Um, sé que tal vez ya vieron este tema, pero es necesario que lo volvamos a recordar. So, let's begin with this topic. So, we have simple present tense with be. Vamos a empezar con la parte del be. Luego vamos a hablar de los otros verbos. So, we are going to begin with simple present with be. Let me take this one. Okay. So we are going to begin with this uh, simple part about the simple present. And it says the verb be is different from the other verbs in this tense. You know that be um, is one of the most used verb in English because it is very dynamic in this case. And we can use for a lot of things. So. In this case, it's very, very different from the other uh, verbs because they have more than one form. El verbo to be es uno de los eh, verbos más dinámicos que tenemos en el inglés. Lo utilizamos para muchas cosas, para muchas conversaciones y para muchas estructuras. Y es diferente a los otros verbos porque tiene más de una forma en su estructura. So we are going to remember all of these uh, forms that the verb to be has. So we are going to talk about positive sentences. And we have these structures. We are going to create a table in which we are going to uh, write the uh, structures. One and two, and we need one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight. So we are going to create a positive statement or the positive. And then we are going to create a positive short form. So here we are going to write the subject and the form of the verb. And we have I am. You are, he is, in this case I need capital letter, he is, she is, it is, we are, and they are. We know that uh, we have two, uh, two uses for you. One is a singular and the second one is plural, but in this case, it is not necessary to write it because we have the same expression. So the positive short form, um, your, is, she's, it's, where, and they. So this is the short form, easy, easy, peasy, like a piece of cake. So we have some examples. I am a student. You are my English teacher. Is my boyfriend. We are classmates. And it is my dog. Because we need to talk about the animals also. So we have five simple examples. In this case, remember that when we are creating this, um, 
present simple questions, I mean, present simple uh, statements, it's not like we're going to create a lot of um, information, but now in the, in the category that you are, you can create longer sentences. En este caso, ustedes están creando oraciones cortas, o en este caso, yo les estoy escribiendo oraciones cortas, pero ustedes ya pueden crear oraciones mucho más largas, ¿verdad? Utilizando el presente simple en positivo. So, let's continue. And we have the negative. Tenemos la parte negativa. We are going to create another table to create the negative. And also we have two and eight. And we have negative. And negative short form. Again, I am not, because we are adding the not. You are not. He is not. She is not. It. It is not. We are not. And they are not. Now we have the negative short form. And we are going to write um. I'm not, but in this case, we are not uh, going to create, you are not. In this case, we are going to combine the virtually with the not. You aren't, you aren't, he isn't, she isn't, it isn't, and we aren't, and they aren't. So, simple as that. It is not necessary to uh, keep doing a lot of things because in this case, it's simple present. So we have something very simple, very easy. And now we have some examples. I am not. Uh, I'm, not I'm, I'm not the secretary. He isn't from Spain. I'm not cool. We are in the town. She isn't my teacher. And that we have some negative sentences, negative expressions. And then we have the questions. That is the main point of all of this topic that we were developing this week. So from the topic number one and to this topic, we have seen uh, questions. And that's the main thing of this, um, these topics or this structure. So now we are going to have the yes, no questions and also the WH words questions. Vamos a ver siempre los dos tipos de preguntas, el sí, el no y las WH word, o las WH questions. So, vamos a empezar con las yes, no question. Page again. And we have here just no question. With B. 
And we have here the structure. Am I? Are you? Is he? Is she? Is it? Are we? And are they? So in this case, we need to add the complement. Solo vamos a, un, a agregar lo que es el complemento a esta estructura. So, examples. Are you from Tokyo? Is she my next classmate? I mean, is she? Oh my God. What is that? Am I? Am I a new model? Are we the next? Participants. Um, is he the chef? So we have simple questions with verb to be. Now we are going to see the WH word or WH questions. Que ya las hemos estudiado también. Todas las preguntas con WH. So we are going to create a DWH uh, questions. And we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven. Okay. We have WH questions. And we have, where am I? What are you? Why is he? Who is she? When are we? And how are they? But you know that we have a lot of uh, words that we can use for questions. Uh, we are not just going to use these ones because we have a lot of words more. Because uh, yesterday, I think we were seeing some uh, WH words that we can use and we have where, why, who, what referring to time, which uh, referring to decision, how long, how often, who's, how many, how much, how old, how and how plus adjective, and so on. We have a lot of uh, WH words that we can use to create uh, these kind of questions. So let's see some examples. Let's see, let's see, examples. And we have, where are you from? Who is that girl? And why are they still at work? at work. So here we have simple uh, questions with WH words. 
So in that case, we are just using the verb to be to create this information. But also we have a lot of uh, verbs that we can use to create this kind of information. Remember that we have a lot of action that we can perform. And in this case, we have regular and irregular verbs. Um, and it is a very, very long list of words that we can use to create sentences. So in this case, we are not just going to use the verb to be to create um, questions or uh, statements. We are going to use the other verbs to create that questions. So now we are going to talk about those verbs in which we are going to create sentences also. No solo nos vamos a enfocar en lo que es el verbo to be, sino que también vamos a ver otro tipo de verbos que podemos utilizar para crear eh, oraciones, preguntas y todo esto, ¿verdad? So, present simple tense with other verbs. So, uh, with all other verbs, we make the present simple in the same way. The positive is really easy. It's just the verb with an extra S if the subject is he, she, or it. And remember that in this case, we need to focus on the structure of the rule of the third person uh, singular. In this case, when you have uh, she, he, or it, you need to change the uh, verb and you have to write S, uh, ES at the end of the verb. Siempre que eh, vayamos a escribir una oración o a la hora de hablar, porque eh, suele suceder that when we are talking eh, and we are really excited, eh, estamos muy emocionados, eh, tendemos a hablar eh, y no nos eh, percatamos de las estructuras que estamos utilizando. Y es normal. But in this case, we need to change some things in the sentences. Tenemos que cambiar algunas cosas en, en las oraciones a la hora de hablar de la tercera persona. Porque tenemos la regla de la tercera persona del singular. En donde nos dice que si tenemos él, ella o eso, y it, eh, he or she, tenemos que agregarle s al verbo cambiarlo por IES en algunos casos o simplemente ES. Pero vamos a utilizar un eh, verbo para hacer los ejemplos. En our verb is play. Vamos a hacer algunos ejemplos con play para eh, hacer la diferencia entre los eh, pronombres y el, el he, she, or it. So let's see. We are going to make positive statements with play. That is the main example. Positive of play. I play. You play. He plays. In this case, we are going to change. He plays. She plays, it plays, we play, and they play. So we have the difference in these cases. This is just a reminder. So let's para que nos recordemos de las reglas. And imagine that. Uh, imagine this situation. You are learning English and you really like the language, but it is not like um, when you are cursing a basic uh, courses, it is not the only time you are going to see these rules. You are going to see these rules all the time, even in advanced English. So it is necessary to remember all of this information. 
siempre, siempre, siempre vamos a estar viendo estas reglas, siempre que estemos aprendiendo inglés. No es como que ya pasamos el curso básico y ya no sabemos todas las reglas y ya hasta ahí lo dejamos. No, siempre las vamos a seguir viendo. Even when you are not studying English. Incluso cuando ya no estudien inglés, siempre las van a seguir viendo porque están ahí y son para ser recordadas. So, I think it is necessary to remember all the um, structures that we are going to use in the future. So, then we have another example. And in this case, we are not just going to use the verb play. We are going to use another verbs. And we have the examples. Example number one, I play tennis every week. Every week. Then he likes chocolate. And then the last one, they usually, in this case, we are going to change something, usually go to the cinema on Fridays. Fridays, but in this case, we need to write a capital letter because in English, it is necessary to write the name of the days with capital letter, also the months. So we have here three examples of these um, rules of the third person of the singular. So it says for a few verbs, um, there is a spelling change with he, she, and it. Before the S, for example, a study becomes a study S. That is uh, the, the thing that I was saying. In some cases, uh, we are going to change the last letter of the verb uh, when we are talking about the third person of the singular. So in some cases, it's going to change kind of, um, it, it's going to be a big change. So there are also few verbs which are irregular in the present simple. And we have the words have that becomes has, do that becomes do's and go that becomes goes. So we can change the structure for the words. To make the negative form, you need to use do not. Para el negativo vamos a utilizar en este caso el do not. No solo vamos a utilizar el not porque en este caso no estamos utilizando el verbo be, sino que vamos a utilizar los auxiliares. Do not or don't or does not doesn't. And we have here the structure. Two. And we have here negative of play and at this side we have negative short form. We are going to have this one. I do not play. Do do not play, he doesn't or does not play, she does not play, and a day. So in negative form, I don't. 
you don't. He doesn't. I mean, he doesn't. She doesn't. He doesn't play. He don't. And they don't. They don't play. So in that case, we have the uh, short form for negative and using the other verbs, not just the verb to be. And then we have some examples. Number one says, you don't study very much. Then we have, Julie doesn't like sport. sport. And the last one, we don't live in London. So in this case, we are going to create questions with the auxiliary do or does. En este caso vamos a crear eh, preguntas con do or does. And I think it will be the last part for, for this session. So I will write the structures and it will be the end. Okay, we are going to end the session seeing the yes, no question using do. And we have this structure, do I play? Do you play? Does he play? Does she play? Play? Does they play? Do. And do we play? So in this case, when we are using the auxiliaries, we are not going to change the verbs. That is something that we need to keep in mind when we are using this kind of auxiliaries in the sentences or in the questions, because we are going to use the verb in base form. So, para terminar, solo recordar que eh, cuando utilizamos el auxiliar al principio de la oración o en cualquier punto de la oración, Antes de nuestro verbo, no vamos a cambiar el verbo, no le vamos a hacer ningún cambio a la tercera persona, eh, porque ya el auxiliar nos está ayudando a hacer ese cambio. So, now it's going, uh, it's time to end the session. So, remember that tomorrow we don't have any session. We are going to see each other on Monday because we are going to start with number two if you don't um if you didn't work on the platform you need to complete section number one and number two for this week so you need to work in the platform because you need to keep working on that uh, assignment so now we are going to uh, say goodbye have a really good night have a really good weekend and see you on monday Good night. Good night. See you. See you. Bye. Goodbye.